Well, back to the proof. Uh, are you comfortable there? <laughs> we are braving the elements. <laughs> so, going on Mark's suggestion, his strategic looking ahead brilliance, we're going to apply, we're, we're thinking we want to turn wedge, excuse me, we want to turn horseshoe to wedge because we know we can turn wedge to ampersand and that's the pattern. So we're going to, we're going to apply implication to this premise, this uh, uh, inference. How's that? Implication on 12. Remember that with implication we turn the horseshoe to a wedge, add a tilde to the left, keep the right the same. And then now we're starting to get some action here. It's starting to look like it's going to approach this, isn't it? So we're going to come up a little bit. There you go. Okay. So now I'm going to, I want to turn this wedge into an ampersand. I know that uh, De Morgan is going to do that, as Mark suggested. So I'll turn the wedge to an ampersand. Uh, I'll add a tilde to the right side. I'll add a tilde to the left side. I didn't leave myself much room here. That's not good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewrite it. Pardon me for being a little messy here. I'm going to turn the wedge to an ampersand. I'm going to add a tilt. Look at that. I didn't even leave myself enough room there. Would you have to double negate the E first? Uh, no. Huh? So I'm going to turn the... I'm going to turn the wedge to an ampersand. I'm going to add a tilde to the E on the right. I'm going to add a tilde to the tilde N on the left. And then I'm going to negate the whole thing. And that's applying the De Morgan algorithm to this. I turn the wedge to an AND, add a tilde to the right, add a tilde to the left. But the left already had a tilde, so now it's going to have two tildes. And I add a tilde to the whole. By the way, have you noticed that when students are learning De Morgan, they oftentimes forget the third step, adding a tilde to the whole or removing a tilde from the whole? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. So now that's De Morgan applied to line 13. And then uh, double negation turns that into tilde n and not e. So that's double negation on 14. And so now we've, we, we, you know, I took away the two tildes and from the end, we copied everything else unchanged. So now we have reproduced the uh, antecedent of line four, haven't we? Yep. And All that works it up. But now we can do the modus ponens. The modus ponens will give us the Z. Okay. And then what were we trying to get in the end? This Tilda, is really Tilda Z. <laughs> Tilda Z. <laughs> so by modus ponens, this matches this. We'll, we'll be able to bring down the Z. And the Z then we would turn into Tilda Tilda Z by what rule? Double negation. You win. And so there's a nice messy proof for you, but I hope it w we hope it was instructive at least.